What's up, Ice and Fire fans? Welcome back to the House of Line podcast. In this video, we will be discussing everything there is to know about Lord Brendan Rivers, aka Blood Raven. So, enough with the intro chit chat, let's get this video rolling by jumping straight into the Duncan Egg novella, The Mystery Knight, where we can find a great description of Blood Raven through the eyes of the one and only Sir Duncan the Tall. He was older than Dunk remembered him, with a lined, hard face, but his skin was still as pale as bone and his cheek and neck still bore the ugly wine-stained birthmark that some people thought looked like a raven. His boots were black, his tunic scarlet. Over it he wore a cloak the color of smoke, fastened with a brooch in the shape of an iron hand. His hair fell to his shoulders, long and white and straight, brushed forward so as to conceal his missing eye, the one that Bittersteel had plucked from him on the red grass field. The eye that remained was very red. How many eyes has Blood Raven? A thousand eyes and one. So who is Brendan Rivers? Brendan was born in the year 175 AC in the realm's capital, King's Landing. He is one of several legitimized bastards sired by the infamous Targaryen king, Aegon the Unworthy. His mother, Lady Melissa, or Missy for short, was a member of House Blackwood. History remembers her as being the sixth of Aegon's nine mistresses, though it is said that his love for her had surpassed that of all the others. During her tenure as Aegon's official mistress, Lady Melissa gave the king two daughters and a son to add to his ever-growing collection of illegitimate children with highborn ladies. Brendan, as well as his sisters, Maya and Gwyneth, were given the surname Rivers, considering that the seat of House Blackwood, Raventree Hall, can be found a little to the north of River Run, with the trident residing just a few leagues southeast. Now, although King Aegon was quite fond of the Lady Melissa, she was inevitably replaced by Bethany Bracken. Luckily for young Brynden, his mother's reputation left him with many connections at court, unlike his half-brother, Aegor Rivers, a.k.a. Bittersteel, who was sent to live at Stonehenge after the king dismissed his mother, Barbara Bracken, in favor of the Lady Melissa. Because of this, Aegor began to resent his younger half-brother for holding higher favor with their king father. In the early years of his adulthood, Brendan was granted a seat on his true-born half-brother, Daeron II's small council. He was a skilled warrior, inheriting the Targaryen ancestral sword, Dark Sister. He held the command of a bowman company called the Raven's Teeth, preferring a werewood bow for himself instead of the Valyrian steel sword. During the first Blackfire Rebellion, Brendan sided with King Daeron, along with his nephew and cousin, Baelor, and Makar. The war concluded with the Battle of the Red Grass Field when Lord Brynden and his raven's teeth took the Weeping Ridge, then rained arrows down upon Daemon and his two eldest sons. However, before Bittersteel could make his escape across the narrow sea, he and Bloodraven clashed in single combat that ended with Bittersteel taking out one of Brynden's eyes. To get a better depiction of this battle, let's head back to the Tales of Duncan Egg, but this time it's Sir Eustace who describes the scene and topic, and can be found in the Sworn Sword. I will never forget the way the sun looked when it set upon the red grass field. Ten thousand men had died, and the air was thick with moans and lamentations, but above us the sky turned gold and red and orange, so beautiful it made me weep to know that my sons would never see it. He sighed. It was a closer thing than they would have you believe these days, if not for Blood Raven. I'd always heard that it was Baylor Breakspear who won the battle, said Dunk. Him and Prince Maker. The hammer and the anvil. The old man's moustache gave a twitch. The singers leave out much and more. Damon was the warrior himself that day. No man could stand before him. He broke Lord Aaron's van to pieces and slew the Knight of Nine Stars and Wild Will Wainwood before coming up against Sir Gawain Corbray of the King's Guard. For near an hour, they danced together on their horses, wheeling and circling and slashing as men died all around them. But when at last the lady faltered, Blackfire clove through Sir Gawain's helm and left him blind and bleeding. Damon dismounted to see that his fallen foe was not trampled and commanded Red Tusk to carry him back to the maesters in the rear. And there was his mortal error, for the raven's teeth had gained the top of Weeping Ridge, and Blood Raven saw half his brother's royal standard three hundred yards away, and Damon and his sons beneath it. He slew Aegon first, the elder of the twins, for he knew that Damon would never leave the boy whilst warmth lingered in his body, though white shafts fell like rain. Nor did he, though seven arrows pierced him, driven as much by sorcery as by Blood Raven's bow. 
Young Eamon took up black fire when the blade slipped from his dying father's fingers, so Blood Raven slew him too, the younger of the twins. Thus perished the black dragon and his sons. There was much and more afterward, I know. I saw a bit of it myself, the rebels running, bitter steel turning the rout and leading his mad charge, his battle with Bloodraven second only to the one Damon fought with Gawain Corbray. But at the end of the day it made no matter. The war was done when Damon died. If Damon had ridden over Gawain Corbray and left him to his fate, he might have broken Makar's left before Bloodraven could take the ridge. The day would have belonged to the Black Dragons then, with the hands slain and the road to King's Landing open before them. The singers can go on about their hammer and their anvil, sir, but it was the Kinslayer who turned the tide with a white arrow and a black spell. He rules us now as well, make no mistake. King Eris is his creature. It would not surprise to learn that Bloodraven had ensorcelled his grace to bend him to his will. Small wonder we are cursed. Okay, so I know many of you out there have never read The Tales of Duncan Egg. I highly suggest picking up the newest release from George R. R. Martin, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, which is the first three Duncan Egg stories in one book, and will be available October 6th. For those of you who haven't read them, I'll put the story Sir Eustace tells Dunk into context. In the Sworn Sword, Dunk and Egg are in the service to a landed knight by the name of Eustace Osgray. House Osgray were once the Lords of Coldmoat, but the castle was taken away by House Targaryen after the Field of Fire during Aegon's conquest. Sir Eustace declared for Daemon in the First Blackfyre Rebellion, with hopes of having Coldmoat returned to him once Daemon sat the Iron Throne. Things did not work out the way he wanted, as you can hear in this story. This is probably why he refers to Bloodraven in a negative manner, calling Lord Brynden a kinslayer, and goes as far as claiming that he uses sorcery and has cursed the realm. When first read, it seems that Sir Eustace is just a bitter old man, slandering Bloodraven's reputation since Lord Brynden killed his would-be king, Damon Blackfire. Now it is true that Brynden is technically a kinslayer, but going as far as claiming that he's a sorcerer and that he controls King Ares I is a little far-fetched. Or is it? We'll discuss this accusation to see if there's any truth to it, along with reviewing Blood Raven's time spent as Hand of the King during the reign of Ares I. You can find all of this in part 2. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to stay updated and be the first to watch newly uploaded videos.